Report of a fire. Engine 9. Medic 8. Started. Um, I am Ashley Harris. I'm a dietitian that works with Healthy Columbus, and I have Pat Schick with me. I misspelled his name um, on this; it will be fixed. Um, and he is an exercise specialist that also works with Healthy Columbus. Um, and we just came today to talk to you guys about nutrition and fitness. Um, so I have a PowerPoint. I ha it's kind of long and detailed. Um, I'm not going to go into all of the details, but the reason I did that is I am going to email it to your bosses and the like. And if people are interested. Um, you can either have an email to or, or a copy printed out. Um, I also, and I'll get them out before I go, have some cards. Um, I am happy to do individual nutrition consultations. Um, for right now, while I have the time, we have a lot of downtime during the summer. Um, and what you'll see is as we start to get into the thick of this, a lot of it is individualized. So I can't flip up, you know, here's how many calories you need, here's how much protein you need, here's a meal plan, because it's going to be different for everyone in the room. Um, do you have anything to say before we get started? I don't think so, no. I, so my position with the city is I run the Employee Fitness Center, which as the employees, you guys have access to. Based on what we just saw, you probably don't have a need for it. And at your houses, depending on what you guys, what the house looks like, you probably won't have a need for it either. But we have a few fighter, fighters that come in downtown. Um, but a lot of what I do too is consultation. So if you have questions, um, whether it's, just a general lifestyle thing. I don't know what I should be eating at this time of day. Ashley and I can kind of work together, and I, I then can tell you um, really anything that, that falls under nutrition, healthy lifestyle, that maybe you don't want to ask some of these guys that are over, over top of you, and you don't know what's, what the process should be. Um, if you think it's a dumb question, ask me. I'll make sure I can figure it out. Um, but Ashley's going to do a lot of talking. The biggest thing that they want is, like she said, is talk about nutrition. Um, and the one thing I will say is you can't overwork your body to the point where you aren't able to perform the next day. It's all a matter of recovery. Your body will be able to recover and be ready to go for the next day of activities as long as you are doing the right stuff. And a lot of it is geared towards nutrition. So as long as you're eating the right stuff, drinking the right stuff, not eating and drinking the wrong stuff, you're golden, so. Cool. So before I get started, do people in here care about nutrition? Yes, yes ma'am. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, I like sure. that. <laughs> um, how come? Why? Why is it important? It's like a Feel better. Feel better so you can lift, yep. Um, and we'll get, we'll get to that, but really I'm gonna talk about the importance of nutrition. Um, looks like I have a room full of believers, but I just kinda wanna stress that. I'm gonna give a brief nutrition overview, and this is where I'm gonna skim through some stuff, um, but there are the slides. The most important thing, we're gonna talk about what to eat and when to eat it, and this really has to do with calories, carbs, proteins, and even fats. Um, we're gonna talk about hydration, and in with there I have some information on caffeine and alcohol, and then supplements, which I think is an important thing to cover. Um, so what's going on here is this is actually some college teams that have taken on dietitians. So there's a big trend in athletics, um, both in college and in professional athletes, to incorporate a dietitian and to focus on nutrition. So this lady actually works with the Buckeyes. Um, this is another college team. There is, with the NFL um, training camps now, the Nike training camps, they have dietitians on site. With, there's a three-part series that I just watched um, on CBS, I think, or NBC, about nutrition in basketball players. And what they're finding is it makes a huge impact. Um, I trained in Boston to become a dietitian, and one of the dietitians I worked under was also the dietitian for the Red Sox. Um, and what we're realizing is it is super important. One, what you eat before you go work out, um, because you need that fuel to kind of perform. But then also, as Pat was alluding to, is recovery. And that's almost just as important, because you have to replenish your body with the proper carbs, the proper protein, the proper hydration, so when you go out, you can do better the next time. Um, and then what's also important is just this kind of all the time nutrition. You know, you could eat perfectly during the week, 
you know, the weekend hits, you go to the Jazz and Rip Fest, you drink a bunch, like, come Monday, you're not going to be performing as well. And really, I think, you know, for you guys, your, you know, games or whatever, it's not on the court, it's not on the field, it's in real life and it's life or death. And you can't predict, like, oh, there's no fires on Mondays. You know, you have to be ready to go at all times. So I think just really maintaining that good nutrition consistently is important. Um, not to say you can't do anything in moderation. You know, I'm a big proponent of, you know, have a donut sometimes, have a beer sometimes, go to the Jasmine Fest, enjoy the food sometimes, but not having that kind of be your baseline. Um, so, so really, you know, why do we care? Well, the diet, and that includes your eating and your drinking, you know, it's everything that goes in your mouth, and that really includes supplements too. Um, it affects your performance, you know, it affects how well we even train. You know, if you are dragging at your training, you're not going to be giving your body the ample opportunity to build up those muscles and um, that stamina, um, whether we compete at our best. And then it also prevents injury and illness. You know, if you're not giving your body what you need, you're much more susceptible to, you know, pulling a muscle, falling down, not having the strength to get over things, or illness. You know, if we're breaking our body down, and when we work out, it actually breaks down our body, it makes us a little more susceptible to illness, and you're not replenishing it with the right things, you're more likely to get cold. You're more likely to just feel not as well. Um, you know, really, it's providing fuel. It's aiding with muscle um, and glycogen recovery, which I'll kind of touch on. Um, building up those muscles, maintaining clear thinking, and also preventing muscle and bone loss. If you're not giving yourself enough calories, if you're not giving yourself enough carbohydrates, which I'll show in a minute, you're going to break down your own muscle to get that. So you might be out there working out so hard and your muscles are not getting to where they need to be. Um, and this is just a little quote I like, is really think of it this way, you know, as a runner, a biker, or any sort of athlete, and I think everyone in this room is an athlete, one of the most important legs of your performance starts with nutrition. You know, it drives the engine, um, you know, the bike or the running shoe, that's not going to make up for not having that core that you need. So all the equipment, all the fancy things are not going to make up for a poor diet. Um, so really, what, what is nutrition? You know, that's the process of eating the right foods so that you can grow properly and be healthy. And we have lots of different nutrients in here. So have people heard of macronutrients? So those are the big ones. These are the things that you know, we have to have, our, our fat, our carbs, our protein. These actually provide us with calories. Um, water, I'll go ahead and consider it a macronutrient. You know, we have to have it, no calories. And then we have micronutrients in here. And these are vitamins and minerals. They provide no calories, but they are necessary for our body to function. So, you know, say you're, you're going out and you're giving yourself enough calories through donuts to, to fuel yourself, but you're not getting these vitamins and minerals, your body's still not going to function properly. Um, these just show you the, the calorie breakdown. So carbs and protein, per gram, they give you four grams of calories. Calories are really the fuel that our body runs on. Fat is more. So fat is demonized. Um, fat's important, I'll touch on that, but keep in mind, you know, we need to have our fat, but fat's just more calories per amount. So you want to kind of limit, you know, the things that you're taking in, um, and then water. Certain kinds of fats, right? What's that? Like certain, like don't eat a bunch of donuts before you're going to go do. Well, even the healthy fats, you know, and, and again, like, you all are burning a lot of calories, um, so you're going to need more calories, so maybe you are someone that, like, you know, a handful of nuts is going to be a great snack because it gives you those extra calories. Me personally, like, I don't need to sit down with a jar of peanut butter and an apple and like <laughs> eat the jar of peanut butter. Yes, it's good healthy fats. I don't need those like 900 calories. You know, I need to measure out my one or two tablespoons. Um, so carbs, you know, what are, I'm not gonna show you. What do carbs do? Why do we need carbs? Exactly. We eat carbohydrates and after we eat them, they turn to sugar in our blood. We need that sugar. That is what our body runs on. That's our fuel. So um, it provides our body with the energy, but it protects our muscles. Because like I was saying before, if you don't have that, your body is going to just break down its own muscles so it can release some sugar into your blood and it can run on that. Um, it regulates the amount of sugar circulating in your body. And then it actually, if you have carbohydrates in the form of fiber, which I won't get into, that helps control cholesterol levels. Um, it can help with blood pressure. It can help with heart health. So we have different types of carbs. And have people heard of the difference between simple and complex carbohydrates? So simple ones, we eat them, boom, they're really simple for our body to break down, turns right to sugar. Um, those are good in some certain cer some circumstances. Say, you know, you get a call, you gotta go out and run out to a fire, you know that you have a really intense training session coming up. You might wanna eat a little simple carbohydrate right beforehand to give your body that little boost of sugar. All day long, no, we don't need to be stuffing our face with simple carbs. Complex carbs, and these are just, they're harder for our body to break down. 
Um, usually that's a whole grain or something like that or a piece of whole fruit. So you think about it, your stomach has to do work to break it down. Once it's digested, you know, there's things that has to peel away before it turns to sugar and before it can enter our bloodstream. So these are ones, and I'll show this. So these are the ones that these complex have these more sustained um, energy release. So our simple ones, they're great. You go into your blood, they shoot up. Then what happens after they shoot up though? Crash. So this is what we want to prevent, you know, kind of on a daily basis. Um, you know, like I said, if you need immediate sugar for, for something, but when you go up and then you crash, what happens when your sugars are down here? You're lethargic, you're jogging. Um, if you're not having like a workout day, maybe when our sugars are down here, we naturally want to bring our blood sugar back up. So you're kind of going for more of those sweets, those candies, those, those simple carbs again. And a lot of people can kind of bounce like this throughout the day, um, which is not good. See, these complex ones, it's a more gradual release. So our sugars don't go up as high, they don't go up as much. Um, it provides a longer fueling for your system. You also don't crash down as much. Now I'm gonna throw another component in there in a minute, the protein, because while these are better, we still don't want them spiking at all. What I want is a nice gradual release of sugar into your system to fuel you consistently through the day um, and then come down. But what we should be picking is these complex carbohydrates over simple ones for the most part. So what are the complex ones? Like I was saying, these are whole grains. These are whole fruits. You know, if you think of an apple, think of a glass of apple juice. The apple juice is gonna be that simple carbohydrate. Um, all the fiber, all that's been taken out. And actually, think of how many apples it would even take to make that glass. That's like, I don't know, four or five apples. You're probably not gonna sit and eat four or five apples in a sitting. Um, and even if you do, then at least the fiber is gonna slow that blood sugar spike. But you know, that apple juice, you're getting all that sugar condensed of like four or five apples. The actual apple, um, you know, you eat it, your, your stomach has to break it down, it takes longer, so your blood sugar is going to not go spike and crash, it's kind of a more gradual release. Um, some of our other whole grains, so, you know, brown rice, wild rice, um, quinoa, those types of things, popcorn's even a whole grain, and then some of our other starchy vegetables, so like sweet potatoes, winter squash, corn, peas, those are carbohydrates, but they're those complex ones. So these are the ones we want to choose most often, these are the ones we want to choose less often, because we really need that energy. Now, what I always stress is I always want people when they eat having a little bit of carbs, but a little bit of protein. And what does the protein do for us? Mm -hmm. Proteins really are building blocks of everything in our body. You know, muscles are made out of protein, but everything. So cells, tissues, blood, all of that is made up of proteins. Um, they also make the enzymes and the components which make our body function. They help break down our food. They help, you know, release hormones, do all these bodily functions. And then, if we don't have the carbohydrates available, they break down and they provide our body with energy. Um, actually, before I go to that. So when I say protein, what do people think of? Meat, Meat fish, exactly all those things, which are fine. Um, I don't know if you noticed on the front, the picture I had, did anyone recognize that guy in that picture? This man. His name, Actually, he's this guy, Rip Usselstein's son. And he talks about the number two, I think, engine diet. He promotes, promotes a vegan diet um, for athletes and for firemen. He's a fireman and got everyone on that. I'm not saying you need to do that. If you want to do that, come meet with one of us. We could set up a healthful diet. Um, but so he's you know, really advocating no meat. Um, and you can get protein from non-meat sources. So oops, you know, obviously meat, fish, chicken, poultry, and the like. Um, cheese, you know, people are like, isn't cheese bad? Well, I'm talking an ounce of cheese. Maybe some of y'all need a little more than that, but not half a block of cheese. Cottage cheese, anyone in here like that? Half a cup of cottage cheese is about 10 to 14 grams of protein. That's a lot. Um, and I'll talk, we don't want to overload on protein. Greek yogurt, people like Greek yogurt in here? Again, that's really condensed protein. So one little container of Greek yogurt is about 14 to 18 grams of protein. Um, but then there's plant sources of protein, so beans, hummus, um, nuts, seeds, nut butters, those types of things, those have protein too. So, you know, this guy that does it completely vegan, you can still meet your nutrient needs doing that. Like I said, I'm not advocating that, happy to support someone if they wanted to go that route, but just getting you thinking outside the box, you don't need to be having these huge steak dinners. And oftentimes a big steak, that's more protein than we need. Um, really, you know, 25 to 30 grams of protein is what you'll find in about the size of the palm of your hand. That's, that's all you need. If you have more than that, and if you're really overloading yourself with protein, it actually can eventually start to damage the kidneys. Um, a lot of these protein drinks too, you know, maybe it's appropriate if you had a really intense 
muscle you know, lifting session to recover with that protein, but we don't need as much as they kind of throw out there that we need. And you certainly don't need to be sipping on protein drinks you know, throughout the day thinking it's gonna build up your muscles. It's not, it's gonna be the actual exercise that you're doing. What's the average amount of protein you should have a day? Great question. So he said, what's the average amount of protein you should have a day? Um, I'll get to that in the needs, but it, my bottom line is it varies per person. So, you know, this is where everything's kind of individualized. So your, you know, your sex, your body composition, you know, what you're actually doing. A bottom line for kind of athletes and people who are really through, you know, hard training is about, I'd say about 1.2 to 1.5 grams per kilogram body weight. Right. <laughs> so, and this is where it can kind of, you know, we can, Pat and I can kind of help you work out your own needs. Um, what does that break down to for like a 150 pound a guy? kilogram is 2.2 pounds, so that times. So, someone pull out a calculator and do the math. <laughs> it's a um, great, if you, if you go about half your body weight. In grams. And this is though where I don't like people Without getting too, to do much math. yeah, I don't like people getting too caught up in the numbers. Like I said, we can, we can do that for you, but if you're fueling, Every couple hours throughout the day, you're having a good carbohydrate, you're having a good protein, you're probably going to be meeting your needs. And if you're recovering after you work out with, with a good amount of protein, you should be meeting your, your protein needs. Um, did you get... Well, you said 2.2 times what? So do 150 divided by 2.2 times 1.2. <laughs> What's that? 81. So that's 81 grams. So that's... You know, that's high on the protein, and it's more than I get tell the average person. That's only 81 grams. You know, that's three, for a 150-pound person. Yeah, 150-pound person. Three ounces of meat, you know, the size of the palm of your hand, that's 20, 25 grams of protein right there. So, you know, we don't need as much as we think, but it really is important to be getting the adequate amounts and space throughout the day. Not, oh, I didn't get my protein today. Okay, I come home and I have a huge steak. You want it each time. Um, the other part with protein, and I think I go into it in a different slide, so the other, but I want to talk about it now, the other importance of protein is it's going to slow the absorption of any sugars from carbohydrates into your blood. So if you remember that graph I was showing where, you know, the simple, you know, carbs, the sugar spike, they crash. The complex carbs, you know, goes up not as high, not as quick. You throw a protein in that mix, all of a sudden, it slows that release into your blood. So it's a more gradual release. It's kind of sustaining. You can, for a few hours, work off those sugars, and it's not crashing out. So say you start off the morning, you have a piece of white toast. That's it, and maybe some juice. You know, your sugars fly up, they crash out. Say you do some whole grain bread and an apple. Okay, better. It's gonna be that more sustained thing. Say you throw some peanut butter, you know, on that bread or peanut butter on that apple. All of a sudden, you're making it just a more gradual release and crash. So I want every time, I always encourage people to have something to eat every three to four hours, carbs and protein each time. And I'll give you some, some ideas for that and I'll actually send a handout for you all. Um, the last thing I just kind of want to touch on when we're talking about different nutrients is fat. Um, what do people in here think about fat? Yummy. <laughs> very, very yummy. Yummy. Okay, okay. So I I'm glad people here. What did you say? Your brain needs it. Your brain needs it, exactly. So fat gets a bad rap. You know, the 80s, we like demonized fat and everything was like fat free, fat free. Well, what would they replace it with? Carbs and sugars. You know, our sugars are flying up. We're more overweight than ever. We're more unhealthy as a nation than ever. Um, we need fat. There's now studies coming out like whole milk is actually healthier for us than skim milk. But we're talking fat in moderation, and we're talking choosing the right fats. Um, why do we need it? You know, it's an energy form. It's how we store energy. Um, it cushions our organs. It's good for our skin. Our brain needs it to function. It transports hormones and certain chemicals that we need around our body. Um, but it can have healthier or harmful effects in the body depending on type. Um, our good fats, they also, they lower inflammation. They help with our cholesterol. Our bad fats raise cholesterol, clog our arteries, make us fat, increase inflammation, increase our risk for chronic diseases. So what do we think a bad fat is? There is no such thing as bad fat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the answers I'm hearing. Pizza, everything that's good, you know, there's no bad fat. Um, one that I really hate is trans fats. People in here heard of trans fats? So trans fats, these are a man-made fat. Um, we thought we were making a healthier fat, one that was able to stay, stay shelf-stable, um, you know, and, but not be those saturated fats. What we found is it actually wrecks havoc in the body. It's not natural. It, um, you know, it has been banned in a lot of places. We're seeing an increased risk for cancers, heart disease, diabetes. So this is the one fat that I'm gonna say, try and avoid it at all costs. Um, where do you find it? It's in margarines, it's in vegetable shortenings, it's in a lot of processed foods. So commercial baked goods, 
you know, think you go to the grocery store and like that bakery thing over there, or like your Ho-Ho's or Twinkies or things like that. Um, microwave popcorn, frozen meals, a lot of these deep fried fast foods like donuts and french fries. Like I said, it's getting banned, like New York City's banned it, you know, a couple cities in California. I think it's coming down the pike that it will be banned, at least in restaurants. Um, one thing you have to do though, if you're just buying food at a grocery store, you have to read the labels. So the food industry is out to trick you. That's a whole nother talk for a whole nother day. Um, but they know that we think trans fats are bad. So they'll put on the, they'll say on the front, zero grams of trans fats per serving. That does not mean it does not have trans fats. It just means that by law, it's a small enough amount per serving and they make these serving sizes really small that, okay, they can say it's zero, but if you have you know, two or three servings, which you might do, you're gonna have trans fats in a, in a significant amount. So what you wanna look for is if you see this word hydrogenated oil anywhere in the ingredient list, you know it has trans fats. It might say partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. You know, it might say just hydrogenated oils. It can come out with all these things, but if you see hydrogenated, you know that has trans fats. So those are the one fat I'm gonna say to really work hard to avoid. Again, not to be completely crazy, you go somewhere and you have a one meal with a trans fat, not, not the end of the world, um, but not consistently. Saturated fats, the jury's out, honestly. Like most things in nutrition, they're good, they're bad. We think that people's bodies react actually differently to them, so for you, saturated fats might be fine, for you, they might not be as good. Um, but these are the ones that tend to raise our cholesterol, we think. We find them in animal products, so you know the fat on meat, the fat in milk and ice cream. I say limit these, you know, don't, don't go crazy and cut them out, but, but just kind of limit them. Um, we have them, these are the healthier ones, the monounsaturated and the omega-3s. This is gonna be found in cold water fish, um, nuts, avocados, olive oils. These are the good healthy fats. These are the stuff I want people including every single day in their diet. So here's kind of the, the meat of it, what to eat, when to eat, and how much. So we need our calories, you know, we, they provide us energy, we have too many calories, we get fat. If we have too little, your performance fails. You fall, you injury, illness, breakdown of muscles. You know, these carbs, and this is kind of the, the basics here, they supply our muscle and brain with fuel needed to meet most stress and training com competition. Too much, weight gain, sugar fluctuations, diabetes. Too little, we have our performance fails. We have fatigue, reduced stamina, breakdown of muscle. Um, you know, our protein, you need that to build and repair muscles. Too much, you get kidney damage. Too little, we have our muscle breakdown, fatigue, injury, and illness, and then our fats, like I talked about. Now, here's where it gets into what's right for me. You know, really, the priority is to meet the energy needs. Now, energy needs are gonna differ. His energy needs are a lot different than her energy needs to sustain. You know, girls and boys, unfortunately, boys get to eat more, it's not fair. Um, <laughs> you know, if you're bigger, if you have more muscle mass, your body's burning through more calories. We're also finding there's a lot of individual genetic variability with metabolism. You know, we've all seen these two people, one guy stuffs his face, the other guy barely eats anything, and the, the guy that stuffs his face is always skinny. So it's kind of finding what's right for you. Um, there's this really complicated, you know, little chart here that you can kind of work out and divide your age and your weight and this and that. I say the best way to predict it is track your intake and watch your weight. You know, and I say this for people also trying to lose weight. You know, people come to me all the time, like, I need to get skinny, how many calories a day should I have? You know, I can throw a number out there, you know, try start with 1,300 or 1,500. The best bet is going to be actually watching how many calories are really going into your body and then watching what's happening with your weight. So while you are training, you know, your calorie needs are going to be higher. Um, you know, I think for most people in this room, I'm not sure exactly how much you do, but I'd say about 2,000 calories a day, maybe more. Um, yeah, because, you you know, you're doing these intense things. But, you know, kind of take, take a day or two, get on my fitness pal. Enter in what you eat, see what your calories are coming in what, and just kind of track your weight. And if you notice your weight is bulking up in ways that you don't want it to, some more fat than muscle, well, maybe tone down what you're eating. If you know, you're having trouble keeping the weight on with the training, bump up what you eat and choose those healthier foods that when you do it. So carbs, you know, people are, well, how many carbohydrates do we need a day? This is another thing where one, we're thinking there's a lot of individual variability. Some people function better on higher carbohydrate diets. Some people function better on lower carbohydrate diets. There are, you know, if you go to the bookstore and you go in the nutrition aisle, there are so many different books. Some are, you know, Atkins, no carbs. Some are, you know, this zone diet, these ratios. Really, again, it's kind of finding what's best for you. I think bottom line is I want people to have carbs every three to four hours. I want you to have complex carbs balanced with a protein. Um, if you want to get into this and if you, if this is all a little confusing to you, Grab my card, come and see me. We can sit down and kind of hash out a plan for you for how many, for how many carbs you need. In general, about 60% of your total calories, though, should come from carbohydrates. We do need to have that as energy.
Especially for you guys because of the amount of exercise you're doing. Yeah. Um, this I've broken down, you know, well, how many carbs are, you know, in things. These are just by 15 grams of carbs. I don't even really like to get into all of this because I find it confusing. Um, same thing, here's different meal plans. You know, I'll throw these up here if people want them. I don't love the meal plans, I don't love the food choices, but it just kind of shows the variability and it gives you kind of an idea of something to work with. Um, so protein needs. Well, like you were asking how many proteins do I need? Same thing, there's this kind of complicated little chart here that you can put in to figure out. Um, you know, I think a good rule of thumb would be take your body weight, divide it by 2.2, times it by about 1.2, 1.5 to find what's right for you. But we can talk about this. Um, you know, they say for moderate intensity endurance activities, 1.2 grams per kilogram. High intensity endurance training is 1.6. Um, so just kind of finding, finding what's right for you. Um, here's some protein amounts, though. So I was saying, you know, three ounces of fish, that's 20, or fish or lean meat, that's 27 grams of protein. Three ounces is the size of the palm of your hand. You know, Greek yogurt, six ounces, I think that's like one of those little containers is about that, 14 to 18 grams. So you can get it in. Fat needs, same thing, totally varies. I say focus on the healthy fats. Um, I don't like to get so caught up in the numbers. And then our micronutrient needs, um, you know, as athletes, we tend to burn through more nutrients. These are ones that people might be at risk for. If you're eating a healthy, well-balanced diet, you shouldn't really need to supplement. If you're worried, get a multivitamin that meets 100% of your needs and it doesn't go overboard. So to, when? To yeah. go back with the fats, um, if you're, to I guess go along with it, don't worry about it. If you're eating whole foods, you'll be just fine. Yep. If you're getting in, you know, eating peanut butter if sandwich you're sometimes, you know. If you're dinner and not warming up a frozen meal, yep. you'll be okay. If you're actually cooking dinner and not eating something out of a package, you'll be fine with fats. Yep. And then with the supplements, I, Ashley's the same way, I kind of say the same thing. If you can eat a meal, wouldn't it be much rather to eat a whole meal than drink <laughs> one of these that might taste like chalk? <laughs> I mean, it, it makes more sense to, oh, this feels great. I'm actually eating something as opposed to drinking something. Supplements are good, though, when you can't get that meal in. Yeah. If you realize, I'm not going to be able to eat for three or four hours after we get done with PT, put the supplement in. And supplements, and I'll touch on this at the end too, because they constitute everything from a multivitamin to like Pat's talking about, like a supplement mm -hmm. drink. And they can be dangerous. And choosing the right brands too. Find someone you trust. Pat, he knows, I don't really mess with supplements. But when to eat. So before we exercise, this is important. And this is where I want everyone in this room kind of listening. About two to four hours before you eat, or before you work out, I want people to have a light meal, a snack. Um, you know, depending on the exercise intensity, it says up to 1,000 calories. I don't really, I think that's really on the high end. You know, a couple hundred calories though. Um, you want carbohydrate, you want some protein. Um, not a ton of fat and fiber, not that you can't have any, but you know, you don't want it to sit in your stomach. Um, ideas like a peanut butter and honey on toast or a carnation instant breakfast, you know, a smoothie, throw some Greek yogurt though in there with your fruit. Um, oatmeal, but throw some almonds on there too. Um, some cottage cheese, you know, crackers and grapes, um, a little lean hamburger on a bun, turkey and Swiss sandwich, um, low fat tuna melt. I actually have a list that I'll email, um, some just different snack ideas, just something. I want you to have a little bit of complex carbohydrates, a little bit of protein to carry you through. So I've heard that you guys are broken up. Some of you work out in the morning, some of you work out in the afternoon. Do people in here eat breakfast before you work out in the morning? Okay. What time do you do it? I wake up at five, but I have to take medication. I have to sit in my system for an hour and a half before I can eat. Okay. Okay. So, so, so yeah. I does anyone here not eat breakfast before they go work out? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what's happening is you're not then giving your body the optimal amount of fuel to really have as you know that intense workout that you want to do. So you're kind of you're kind of cheating yourself. You're not giving your body enough fuel, so you're not able to work your muscles as hard. Um, there are certain situations and certain people, like we're gonna find everything is kind of unique to the individual. I know Pat doesn't like to eat a lot before he works out, right? Well, don't worry about that. Okay. So, <laughs> if you think about what time, like what time is the morning PT session? Seven. 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 What time would you normally go to bed? 10 maybe? Two. Two. <laughs> let's, say, let's say you get a, a decent night's sleep, you go to bed at 10 or 11, you probably eat at eight o'clock, you've gone 12 hours without eating. And then now you're trying to tell your body, let's perform at our highest level, because we're also competing for a job, there's a bunch of stuff on the line. Your body says, no, I'm not doing that. I yeah. can't do that. Even if it's so, like you set alarm, you have some peanut butter and crackers by your bed. You set alarm, you wake up, you eat them, fall back asleep for a little bit, you've got that. <laughs> <laughs> 
You've got that fuel. You're in the car on the way. Grab. I, I always tell people if you don't like a whole lot of stuff, lar bars are a dollar. A lot of a lot of carbohydrates in them, not a lot of protein, but it's enough that yep. three minutes before that should be enough. I think they're like 190 calories. That's kind enough to get you through a workout before you get a full meal. In. Kind bars and Cliff bars are yeah. other ones that I like too. Um, those are great. And what's great about them too is they're non perishable. So you afternoon workout people. Say, I don't know, something's going on, you're driving in later, you can keep them in your car, you can keep them in your desk, you can keep them here, you know, you have something to eat. Now, 30 to 60 minutes before, so say you woke up late, say you didn't get a chance to eat, say you know that you have a really intense, you know, workout coming in and you think you need a little extra fuel, um, that's fine to snack 30 to 60 minutes before. This, though, you want it to be, I, this is the one instance where I'm like, you know what, just carbohydrates is fine. You don't need a bunch of protein weighing it down. So a little sports drink, some of those gels or gummies, or like a piece of fruit, you know, or just like some jelly on, on bread, something like that, just to give you a little boost. So say you wake up late, you're like, shoot, I didn't get time for my sandwich. Don't not eat, you know, but just grab something that's gonna be a little quicker to digest. Fruit's my best, you know, I think the best one. Grab a banana, you know, eat a banana, eat an apple, get on your yeah, way. Or keep like a bag of pretzels in your car somewhere. Yep, pretzels so that, is another thing that- That last minute crap I didn't eat it. Yep. Now, um, this one, and this is going to vary. We kind of debated about putting this in here. If you're going to be exercising for longer than 60 minutes, depending on what you're doing. I mean, this could be everything from, you know, you have a two-hour workout to someone who's running a marathon. Sometimes you might need to refuel in between. I don't know if that's allowed here. I think there's certain people, like a diabetic, you might, okay, you might actually need to have that extra permission. Or maybe keeping something like a little gel or like a banana or something that's really quick to grab and go and eat. It might, you know, these hot days though, you guys are outside running around, you all might not want to grab <laughs> something and eat it while you're, while you're working out. So listen to your body, listen to your own personal situations, but there are cases where you might need to have a little snack just to keep you going if you're working out for a long time. Um, and then this is the eating after exercise. So just as important as fuel before, we need to eat after. So do people in here know, have you heard of glycogen? So basically our body, um, we have glucose is what we call our blood sugar, you know, when our sugar when it's in our blood. We also store some of that sugar in our muscles in the form of glycogen is what we call it. And that's there, so when we've exhausted all that sugar in our blood, so, you know, I've eaten my banana beforehand, but I'm running, you know, I have nothing more to burn, our muscles release that little bit of glycogen before they actually start to run down, just to give us that little burst of extra energy. What happens when we work out for a while, we deplete that glycogen. We need to replenish it. If you don't replenish it, when you come into your next workout, you're not gonna have that, you're gonna be more broken down, you're not gonna have the energy that you need. Um, there's been tons and tons of studies um, with athletes looking at this, and if you're not replenishing just a small amount of carbohydrates after you work out, you, your performance just deteriorates the next time. Um, so we need a little bit of carbs. It doesn't have to be excessive. It doesn't have to be a ton. We also need a little protein. So as we work out, we break down our muscles. We need to give our muscles that protein back um, just so they don't completely end up breaking down. A good ratio is about three to one of carbs to protein. Um, any of those ideas that I gave you for the before workout snacks are perfect for after workout. But here's the caveat, you have only a small amount of window to get this in. So we say up here about 15 to 60 minutes. Ideally, Pat and I would love to see people get it in within 30 minutes of a workout. Um, that's why where some of these bars come in handy, you know, say you all finish your morning workout, lunch isn't for an hour, you could grab a bar, you know, or a piece of fruit and some peanut butter on it. Something to just replenish you. Um, actually, a glass of chocolate milk. There's been a lot of studies that's the perfect ratio. Um, just an eight ounce glass of chocolate milk, drink that down, and then you can go to your lunch in a half hour, 45 minutes, um, just to, to recover. But this is, like at the beginning I was talking about, if you recover right, you'll be just fine for the next day. This yep. is where it all comes into play. And then when you pair that with a cool down stretch, or even doing something at night when you get home, stretching, going through a 15, 20 minute stretch routine when you're sitting there studying or watching TV, that's what's gonna prepare you for the next day, not waking up early, trying to trek your water, trying to eat something quick, <laughs> and then getting there late and all of a sudden your hamstring's done. Yeah. And even for, you know, I don't, looking around this room, I don't think that this is an issue in this room, but even people that are trying to lose weight, a lot of times they think, well, after working out, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have anything, you know? No, you see the best success with weight loss and getting fit having that little recovery. Um, thing. Here's, like I was saying, some snack ideas. A little smoothie, sports bar, graham crackers and peanut butter, chocolate milk, 
Um, you can take out the low fat. <laughs> I hate low fat things, and the studies are starting to prove that. But a little bit of chocolate milk, uh, banana and a piece of cheese, you know, string cheese and like an apple or a banana, a little flavored Greek yogurt. Trail mix is another one. Um, I make my own trail mixes. You can buy them at the store. You can buy them even pre-portioned. Um, I just go to the store and make my own. So I get, and I like chocolate, so I put like M&Ms in there, some nuts, some seeds, some dried fruit. I put them into little baggies and I keep them everywhere. You know, there's no reason that you can't have those, you know, in your bag, in your locker or something to kind of recover. Um, these are some meal ideas. These are bigger things. It's fine to have a meal right after you work out as long as it's within that window. So if you guys literally finish, you're going right into lunch, fine, just have your meal. But you need those carbs and protein. So, you know, a whole wheat pita sandwich with turkey and veggies and um, rice bowl with beans and cheese. You know, there's so many different options. A little stir fry, um, getting your brown rice and stuff in there, though, too. Go ahead. Yeah. Chipotle. You don't like Chipotle? Just don't get sour cream and cheese. You can have Chipotle. Have it in moderation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or, get, or get the guacamole that help those healthier fats on there. Yeah. Um, this is a list of bars, too. These are all good bars. You know, the Balance Bars or the Cliff Bars or the Kashi's or the... Kind aren't on here. They, I don't think they were out when these came. Have people in here tried Kind bars? They're awesome. They come in all different flavors. Um, they're the perfect about 200 calorie amount, perfect little ratio. Hydration. So this is super important. Um, I've heard we've already had a dehydration issue. Um, in general, you know, most of our body's water. We need um, water, you know, helps us digest food, helps us carry our waste from our body, helps us regulate temperature, which is really important in these heat. Um, we don't store water. You have, you can't build up a reserve. You have to be drinking the water each day. We recommend at least eight cups per day for everyone in this room with what, what you're doing right now. That is not enough. I would say, bottom line, um, try and get in a gallon a day. You know, there is what's the ratio? The half your body weight in ounces. That's like, yeah, that's a fair way to think about it. But what's the best way to know if you're hydrated? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. If you realize that you're peeing in yellow Gatorade. Some water. <laughs> you're yeah. clear, you're doing well, but keep hydrating. Because like she said, you can't, like, oh, <coughs> being clear, great. I don't have to drink anymore for the rest of the day. Yep. You're going to lose that quick, especially with 90 degree temperatures like we're seeing for the next week or two. Um, so that's, yeah, you know, I just, to keep it simple, I'd say, you know, get one of those gallon jugs like you have right there, fill that up. Um, there, gallon <coughs> jugs, make sure you get that through the day. If drinking water is an issue for you, um, you can do things to flavor it up or play tricks with yourself. You know, like, okay, each time I eat, I have to drink 12 ounces of water. You know, you're kind of getting it in throughout the day. Um, even, so it's summer now, water's important. This training I've heard goes through, you know, February. People don't realize that when it's cold out, you're still sweating, you still need the water. So don't taper off. You know, you're not sweating as much. So, you know, maybe you could have a little less, but it's still really important to get that water. In. Um, you know, cools our body, prevents us from overheating. Um, you know, really monitoring your urine color is going to be your best bet. If you want to get real technical, and sometimes we like to play things, weigh yourself before you work out, weigh yourself after you work out. However amount um, you have to replenish that fluid to get you back to that, that weight, because that's what you've sweated off. Um, the goals, really though, you want to be well hydrated going into an activity. Like Pat was saying, this is the 24 hours coming into it. There's really no break in the time that you can hydrate. Um, also, you want to have some electrolyte-rich fluids. You know, you're sweating, you're losing sodium, you're losing potassium. So things like Gatorade, I know that you had some Gatorade stuff down there, um, diluted juices, sports drinks, um, broth even. Um, coconut water, do people in here like coconut water? Coconut water is about 500 grams of potassium. That's more than a banana, so that's a great way to get in some... I make smoothies with coconut water just to get it in. So thinking kind of getting those electrolytes in there, um, V8 juice, um, really replacing those sweat losses by drinking regularly during your activities, and then rehydrate um, after performance. So after you guys get off the you know, field or the training, make sure you do rehydrate from that. Just want to talk a little bit about caffeine and alcohol. Caffeine, um, there are some studies to show that it boosts your athletic performance. Um, does this mean I'm recommending it? Does this mean I think it's for everyone? No. Um, but it might be helpful. You know, there, I don't see anything wrong with someone having a cup of coffee before you get going for the day. Um, keep in mind, though, caffeine is a diuretic. It actually makes you lose water. So um, that does not count towards your fluids, and you need to have a little more fluids if you do have that. But if you want to use caffeine um, and it's not giving you that anxiety and jittery and rapid heartbeat and insomnia and those types of things, I don't think that you need to eliminate it completely. Um, again, this is something if you want to really chat about this, come talk to me and Pat. 
um, we can kind of see what's right for you. And a lot of that, the jeeriness, the go back, the anxiety, the rapid heartbeat, a lot of that happens when you drink coffee on an empty stomach. So if you have something to eat while you're doing it, you're not going to quite, you're not going to see the huge effects of the diuretic side of it all because you're still going to have something in your stomach. It'll help absorb um, the caffeine, but on the same note, like she was saying, moderation. <laughs> a huge thing of coffee when you're not here. Um, timing for it, so about an hour before competition. Um, again, tolerance depending on the, in the individual, but really know what you're putting in your body. Do it in moderation. Don't use caffeine supplements um, or those energy drinks that are like loaded in caffeine where it might be way more than you, you, know, you need. It might be increasing your heart rate may, way more than you would anticipate. Um, and deter meet with someone to determine the right amount for you. So, you know, brewed coffee, about eight ounces. Starbucks is way higher than this. It's about 60 to 150 milligrams. These energy drinks, 80 to 200 plus. Some of these things, we have no idea what's going into them, so be careful. Pills, be careful. Um, soda and tea, it's going to be less. Alcohol. Y'all drinking a lot on the weekends? No, ma'am. Ma <laughs> We're studying. Yes. We're studying. I'm sure, you know, with this intense training, you're learning quickly. It, it's not conducive, and, you know, it's, it's going to inhibit your performance. Um, it also acts as a diuretic. You know, you go on a bender on even a Saturday night, I bet you, I bet you Monday, like you're gonna be feeling it. So you need to rehydrate if, after drinking anything. If you have a big drinking night, which I don't encourage, really rehydrate. Um, it's gonna suppress fat as a, um, for, uh, suppress your ability to use fat as a fuel during workout. So you're not gonna burn the fat like you want. You also are gonna have less energy. Um, increases your risk for nutrient deficiencies. It interferes with post-activity recovery. Um, it delays your carbohydrate repletion and muscle repair, like I was talking about. I mean, bottom line, it's not, it's not good. You know, if you're going to have it, everything in moderation. For ladies, we say no more than a drink a day. For men, no more than two drinks a day. Um, and as I'm getting older, I've, I've talked with my friend, we're really noticing, like, gosh, now that we, like, don't drink nearly as much, even that one drink, you know, or those two drinks, it, it can affect how you feel the next day. You may not be hungover. You may not be, you know really feeling it, but it's kind of inhibiting your performance. And so it's just kind of you're putting yourself in an unfair um, advantage. So, or disadvantage, excuse me. Anything to add with the cap alcohol? Uh, yeah, one, I guess if you're going to go home and you're going to have a cookout, say you're going to a family gathering, whatever. Um, you start at noon, people start cooking out, you start, you're like, well, I'll have a drink or two. Say you would drink five drinks on Saturday, you still got all day Sunday to recover, but it's still going to hit you. On Monday morning, the best, I guess, if you if you can't get away from alcohol, if you <laughs> got an issue and you're going to drink Saturday, <laughs> make it a drink and then an entire glass of water. And then if you need to, have that other drink and then an entire glass of water. And kind of go the drink water, drink water, drink water, drink water. And picking, I mean, paying attention to what you're drinking too. You know, go with the light beers. If you drink wine, um, I call it my wine water I make in the summer. You know, I make either spritzers or I just put, you know, water in and fruit and herbs and you're still feeling like you're drinking a drink and it's about this much wine instead of this much wine. Um, you can out drink all your friends and that way, you know, or um, <laughs> if you're going with like hard liquor or things like that, you know, watering it down, um, you know, have a big glass, fill it with mostly, I don't know, soda or tonic water or whatever, a little bit of alcohol. You still feel like you're drinking a drink, but you're not getting all that actual alcohol in there. The last thing I want to touch on and then I'll open it up for question is supplements. People in this room do supplements, take supplements. Yes. What do you take? A protein shake. And okay. On the way in and then after we work out. Okay. What other things do people take? Okay. 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 So I'm hearing all sorts of different things. Everything from individual nutrients, glucosamine, um, or fish oil to these kind of more, you know, Advocare, which is a combination of of you know supplements all in one and also you know shakes or shakes so supplements come in all shapes and forms um, I'm not going to say they're bad because there are certain situations where they're beneficial you know something like fish oil we're actually woo, studying it for lots of health benefits um, there's other things that might inhibit, that might prevent someone from being able to get in the proper nutrition you know we know that after the age of 50 our stomach produces less of something we call intrinsic factor which is what we need to absorb <coughs> vitamin B12 so maybe you need a B12 supplement you know or maybe we're all individual. Your body tends to burn through a certain nutrient more than others. You're having trouble maintaining those blood levels. Sometimes it's warranted. Going overboard, though, and with some of these products on the market, it can be actually really dangerous. Um, so really, for some of these things, use extreme caution. If it's the things like you see in GNC and 
it's like Jack 3D and they're promoted to like build your muscle or cut your weight or this and that. Um, if they look too good to be true, they probably are. And unfortunately, supplements are not regulated by the FDA like drugs and food is. Um, there are some loose guidelines, but they don't have regulatory boards looking at it. And it's usually until someone dies, enough people die from a certain supplement or you know get liver damage or liver failure, then they start to really investigate it and then it's pulled from the market. Um, and then usually those companies will kind of tweak a little something, get it back on the market, and it's just, it's dangerous. Um, especially if you're out working out and working really hard, you know, you hear these athletes dying of heart attacks on the field. I mean, it's just, it can be, it can be very dangerous. So what I would recommend, um, Find, first of all, a trusted third-party source that verifies the purity and the potency. So even if, okay, we say you need fish oil and we've determined it's safe, well, there's lots of brands out there of the fish oil. We want to find one that's going to be safe for you. But look into these things that you're taking. And really, if you think you need a supplement, what I would recommend is only take that supplement. Say you need vitamin D, then only take something with vitamin D, not something with a list of 100 ingredients, because we don't know what those are doing. You know, I, um, I also am an oncology dietitian. I'll have patients coming in saying, well, is this safe for me to take? You know, it has 100 ingredients on the side. I don't have the time, first of all, to look up all 100 ingredients, look up if it's safe with them. Also, the research just hasn't been done. You know, for most of the supplements listed, we don't know if it's safe or not. Um, so I'm not saying supplements are bad, but I'm saying being very specific with your supplementation. You know, if you're doing a protein shake, great. Try and have it be just protein, not protein plus creatine, this, that, you know, a bunch of things kind of added in. That's where those third party ones come in too, because with the supplement industry, Ashley can come out with a supplement tomorrow and start selling it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the regulation <laughs> of the supplements. Um, here are some of the dangerous ones. You know, there's these steroids, growth hormones, blood doping. You know, these are ones that we know are dangerous. Um, but like I said, there's a lot out there that we, we don't know. So just using, using caution. I'd hate to see anyone have a heart attack or cardiac failure or liver failure. Um, trying to be healthier, you know, you can mostly get it through food. So bottom line, you know, really cal calories, carbohydrates, protein, and fat, they're important for all. Your needs are going to vary by individual. Um, you know, I suggest kind of looking at these to come up with what might be right for you or come talk to one of us. Um, it's really important to fuel beforehand and afterwards um, for recovery. So beforehand, you know, either that two to four hours before carbon and protein or, you know, if it's going to be within that hour, maybe just a carb. And recovery within, you know, ideally 30 minutes, a carb and a protein. Hydrate, like trying to get in a gallon a day, include some electrolyte fluids, and then using caution with supplements. So thank you for your attention. This is actually the most attentive class I think I've ever had. Um, any questions? Mm -hmm. Do you have some sort of uh, baseline diet that we can follow? So we kind of talked about that before I came up. Someone alluded to a meal plan. I can get you guys some generic basic meal plans. Um, where it gets hard is, you know, what's going to be the right calories for you or what are your, you know, individual preferences for you know, the food and that type of thing. But, yeah, if you want, I can get out this week to your supervisors just some <clears throat> basic meal plans to kind of go and work from. Um, and I have some that are, like, real basic, like, turkey sandwich, you know, orange in this for breakfast, too, more like the clean eating ones, which are a little more complex, so I'll get you both of those uh, for people who are a little more on the foodie end. Keep in mind with these meal plans, too, it doesn't mean that, you know, they'll usually have like seven different breakfasts on there for the week. You don't have to do that. You find a breakfast you like, you can have that breakfast the same day. You find a snack you like, you can have that snack the same day. Um, it just gives you some ideas. Um, but basically, I want people eating, you know, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, um, and recovering after you've worked out. Yeah, I'll get those to you guys. Yeah. Uh, have you ever heard of EAS? Yeah. So they're run by Abbott. Do you guys know what Abbott does? Yeah. Baby food. Odds are they aren't going to be producing something for an adult that's going to be detrimental to health because then all of a sudden an adult line goes bad. Say goodbye to the baby formulas. Yeah. Um, or even like a basic whey protein or something like that. Or, you know, as long as it's just the protein, you know, that you see. And a good way to think about it, too, if you look at the back of a label and it's a, f a whole jar of ingredients, everything's just labeled down, mm. odds are there's something in there you're not going to want. But if you look at it again and you look at it, now it's going to cost a little more money, but if the ingredients is only five, six, seven ingredients, that's probably a pretty decent one to go with. And then after that, if you test it, it's working fine for you, then you can do a little more research to see if for sure you want to keep buying it before you 
move on to the next one? Or? Greek yogurt or powdered milk are also great ways to naturally just boost that protein. Um, like if you're going to put it in a shake or a smoothie. Yeah. Other questions? Cool. Well, I'm going to put my card out. Um, it has my city email. I contract with the city, so I'm here part time. Um, and, but I've been given the go ahead that for while my summer is kind of slow, I'm happy to do individual consultations if people want to meet. Um, we can work out either if there's enough interest, I can come over here and do a couple sessions, or my office is downtown right next to the gym. Um, my email's though also on it, so if you just have a question, you know, you want to shoot me some protein brands or something like that, let me know. Same thing for Pat. Do you have some papers with yeah, your stuff? Yeah, my card's here. I also have something um, that we use for the uh, a lot of the maintenance crews that work for the city. Um, it's basically just dynamic stretches. I know you guys do a lot of dynamic stretches, especially for your hamstrings, um, which we were talking before we walked in, basically dynamic stretching is just stretching through movement. It's not conducive to just sit like this, stretch your hamstrings and then go out and run. But if you can mimic the activities you're going to do through, like what we were talking with kicks, um, we were talking with RDLs, everything through movement, it's beneficial too to do that at night. You get home tonight, you, you're realizing, man, I've read for two straight hours, I need to do something, get up and move. Go through the dynamic stretches that they make you do in the morning. That'll get your blood flowing again. And then, once you're warm, sit down and go through a full stretch. The static stretching of hamstrings, quads, calves, even get your arms. It's kind of hard to stretch your arms from a dynamic move besides just kind of waving them like an idiot. But, um, <laughs> but there's a few decent ones on there just to go through. It'll take you five, ten minutes, just enough to get you back into the mindset. Plus, that gets your blood flowing. Then you start, you can start kind of retooling and getting back into the books and stuff is what you guys have to learn. Cool. Well, thank you all. And I will get out some, I'll send in the copy of these if people want it, but I'll get out some meal plans um, and snack ideas too for everyone. So, cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.